Hey, what is going on everybody? My name is Roddy and you're watching my channel, Roddy the Brand. Today we're going to set up a very basic Node.js, Express and MySQL project and we'll learn how to deploy it on Heroku and ClearDB. This video will be timestamped so you can quickly skip to any of the sections that interest you. I hope that you find the video useful. I would appreciate it if you like the video, consider subscribing for more content like this and share the video with your friends, family and pets. Now let's jump on a computer and get started. If you want to follow along, first of all, go ahead and create an account at heroku.com. And the first thing that I want to mention is that unfortunately, if you want to install add-ons, you're going to have to have your account verified. Now, the unfortunate bit is that you're going to have to insert credit card or debit card, depending on where you are in the world. And this is how they can verify you and allow you to install add-ons. I mean, everything that we're doing today will be free. And technically speaking, when you use your free dyno, uh, your project shouldn't cost anything. It will just stop running. But obviously check this with the documentation as well. And now if you want to follow along, as you can see, I've zoomed in quite a bit. So you can see I am at the dashboard.heroku.com slash apps. Now let's create a new application by clicking new, create new app, and then we need to give it an app name. So node js dash clear db dash, I don't know, Heroku, something like this. And then let's give it, and then for the region, I'm going to go Europe because this is closest to me. And then I click create app. This should take a second. Later on, we'll have a look at how to deploy this as well. So it's going to be a fully working website. And the first thing that we need to do is install our database. To do this, we can go to resources here on the tab and then look for MySQL databases, MySQL. Now, ClearDB has a free tier and also this one has a free tier as well. I'm going to use ClearDB today. I think the free tier allows you to have roughly five megabytes for your MySQL database, but obviously check that at the marketplace and they will give you a lot more information. So I'm going to choose the free tier here and then submit all the form. This should take a second. And now before we get the database username, host and password, we can actually let's click on this and quickly explore it. Now, this website will give you a couple of things. It will give you your database name. And if you click on it, this will give you some statistics here of your database. And also you can have a look at backups and jobs. System information is where you can find your uh, username and password and you can reset it if you wish. The last thing that I wanted to show you was that if you go to the dashboard actually, and then how to connect here, you can see a different ways of connecting. But today we're going to be using my SQL workbench. Let me close this because we won't need it anymore, but we do need to go to the correct website, go to settings. And if you scroll down, you'll see this config vars. We need to click on reveal config bus and this will give you the username, the password, the hosting and the database name. So I need to copy this and paste it somewhere so we can use it a little bit later on. I'm going to go in Visual Studio Code and just create info.txt. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to paste it here and unuse it a little bit later. I'm going to save this. And now the first thing that I want to do is connect this database that we just created with my SQL Workbench. To do this, let's open my SQL Workbench. It's a little bit small, but I'm going to try to zoom in in prediction. And the first thing that we need to do is create a connection. So let's do that. And then we need to give it a name. So Node.js and then, I don't know, clear DB. Let's do it like this. The host name will be the host name we can copy from the bit that we just copied from Heroku. So the host name will be from here, from the add symbol to the .com, that's the host name. So let's copy that and paste it inside here. The username will be the front bit here. So from the slash to the column, that's your username, copy and paste. And now we need the password, which is here from the column to the add symbol, copy and paste, store in, in vault here so we can paste it in here and the first thing that you want to do the port number by the way is going to be the same 3306 and the first thing that you might want to do is to test the connection so i'm going to click test connection and as you can see successfully made the mysql connection which means that everything we just done is working and we can continue press ok ok and now we have our new connection here i can click on this 
and this will open the whole uh, editor. Usually, if you just installed MySQL Workbench, you might just get it to look, uh, it might look like this, but what we need in here is the schema. Now, you could definitely import some data uh, if you have an existing database, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table quickly and just do like, I don't know, just do a very simple table that we can use today. So this is our database here and we need to expand a little bit and click on tables. Actually, that's wrong. If we double click on the table, sorry, and then click on this plus sign here, create a new table, this should allow us to create a new table. I'm going to keep this super simple and just call it user. And then for this table, I'm going to leave everything as default, but we need to give it a few columns and then let's give it an ID. So we need a unique ID. This will be an integer. This will be an integer. It will be a primary key and it's not going to be, and not no will be a uh, selected because this cannot be null. We always need the value there. And then let's do something else. Maybe like let's do name. And then for the name, I'm going to keep a simple varchar 45. Everything is fine here. Let's add one more column and I'm going to call this, I don't know, something like job. And then this can be varchar 45 as well. And that would do. Now that we have this completed, let's click on apply because we need to create this table and this is going to show us the SQL script that you could have done manually as well if you are familiar with SQL, but this is just a little bit easier and I can just apply and this should take a second. Click finish. And now if you want to see your table, we can actually remove all this, go to tables, expand there, and you should see the user table here, which is good. If you want to see the data in the user table, you can click on this little icon here and this should open it. At the moment, we don't have anything, so it would be nice to have something. So let's put on the ID, let's put one, let's put rad and let's put for job web developer like so. And that would do, I'm, I'm going to expand them a little bit so you can see. Okay. That's pretty good. Of course you can add more, but we really don't need them. We're just testing here. So let's apply this as well. We need to insert this into the database like you should finish and that's it. We have our first row. Now we can try to create a quick app and connect to the database. Then we can display the results and we can deploy it to the record. Let's have a look at how we can do that. As you can see, I've already got a project folder created here. It's blank, it's empty. So what I'm going to have to do is create a new project. To do this, I'm going to open the terminal inside here. Uh, if you're not using Visual Studio Code, of course, you can use something else like PowerShell terminal or whatever. And to initialize a new project, I'm going to do npm i um, init, and then I'm going to use the Y flag, which will just save me a few seconds of pressing enter. And this is just basically going to populate name, version, description, and so on super quickly. But if you wish, you can always change them. I want to make an express server, so we definitely need to install express. I'm going to install EJS to for or view engine, and I'm going to install my SQL. So to do this, let's do all of them at once. npm install express, and then we need AJS, and then we need MySQL, and press enter. This should take a couple of seconds. And then if we go to the package.json file, you should see everything, all the dependencies in here. And we might as well set up our project so we are ready to deploy to Heroku when our app is finished. So I'm going to change the main file here to be app.js just because I prefer it like this. And then I'm going to remove this test line here and convert it to start column and then inside double quote, I can do node and then app.js. So I'm going to be starting the application manually, but that's okay. Hopefully we won't have too many changes. That's all looking good so far. I can save this and close it. Now we need to create our app file. So let's do a new file, app.js. And inside here is where we can start building our application. Now there are a couple of things that we need to do. Let's start by creating a very simple server and let's quickly test it before we do anything else. So to do this, let's include express const express equals require and then we require express. We need to initialize the express server by doing const app equals express like so. And we need to initialize the express server by doing const app equals express like so. The next thing that we need to do is set a port number so I can do const port and this will be equals process dot env dot port. So we are either going to use the environment port number or if there is nothing there, we're going to do port 
3000 and that should do the job and by the way feel free to uh, close everything with uh, semicolons i think i'm just gonna leave it as it is now the next bit that we need to do is app.listen and then we need to put the port number so we want to listen on this port number that we just created and the last thing that we can do is maybe just let's just console log something console.log and then we can just console log something like server is listening on port and then we can bring the port number by doing a dollar sign and then curly brackets port like so and now technically speaking this is how easy it is to create an express express server and if you run this project hopefully everything should run smoothly so we can do that by doing in the command line we can do node app.js and as you can see server is listening on port 3000 which is what we want okay this is great i can do control and c to stop this or command and c if you are on mac and now we can start bringing in ejs and then the database so to set up our view engine to be ejs it's actually fairly simple we can i don't know let's do it around here so view engine and we can do this by the app dot set and then view engine and then the view engine will be ejs of course feel free to use perk handlebars or whatever you like this is just easy to do and then in order to render a page we can do render um, render home page and let's do app dot get and then inside here is we need to put slash because this is our home page if we had about maybe we'll put about but this is our home page and now we need to put this this is going to be a function and this function will have the request and the response like so and then we open curly brackets and inside the curly brackets we usually put our logic so this time we're just going to do rest.render to test things so i'm going to just render let's say let's just do index and i'm going to have to create this file and i'm going to have to create this file uh in a second but you know what just to make it a little bit more clear this is a page so let's do pages slash index and you don't have to specify the extension here but it will be ejs so this is all good technically speaking if we say this if we create a folder called views and inside here let's create another folder called pages and inside here is where we're going to be creating our pages we're only going to have one but index.ejs like so and then we can do something here so let's do a blank html file and i'm just going to say i don't know let's do something big h1 hello world save this and this should be fine okay everything is looking good the next thing that we need to do is test before we do any of the mysql stuff to do this we can do node app.js and as you can see server is listening on port 3000 so if you go to the browser and we do localhost column 3000 you will see that this is rendering hello world which means that everything that we've done so far is working okay this means that we can bring the database now. So what I'm going to do is let's include MySQL somewhere. Okay, let's include it somewhere around here. So we can do const MySQL and this will be equals require and then MySQL. In order to use MySQL, we need to set our connection details. So connection details. And so this is going to be const connection and this will be equals MySQL and then create connection like so. And inside here we have brackets and then curly brackets. And inside the curly brackets, we're gonna have a couple of things. So we're gonna have a host column and then in single brackets or double brackets, if you wish, then we're gonna have the host. We're gonna have a user, then single brackets, oops, and then, and then comma. And then we're gonna have password, column, single brackets. And one more, we're gonna have the database name, like so columns and single brackets like so and we don't need to put comment here it's absolutely fine so this is all looking good now we need to bring the host the username the password and the database so we're gonna have to do exactly the same thing that we done with the mysql workbench all right now we need to get the data so if we click on this oh i misspelled this but yeah i was gonna do something like this it doesn't really matter i'm probably gonna remove this anyway so info.txt is where we copied this earlier and I need the host first of all here it is just like we've done it earlier so the host is here the username is this one here the password is this one here and the database name is 
this one here. Uh, the database name is up to the question mark, by the way. And now let's paste it in here. That's pretty much all connection done. And let's do a very simple uh, MySQL query that we can check out in the console and then we'll render the result as well. So to do this, what I'm going to do, um, maybe just after the view engine, uh, let's do, let's do in here. Let's make some space. Okay. Inside here, what we can do is connection.query and I'm going to do something very simple. So let's do select everything from the user table that we just created earlier where ID is equals and then in double quotes one. So I just want to select the first ID, the first user. And then after this, after the single quote here, we need to add comma and we, we're going to have an error or the data that is going to come back from the database. I'm just going to call this rows like so, because we might have multiple rows. I mean, at the moment we only have one username, but usually have a lot more. And then this is going to be an arrow function and in curly brackets is where we're going to add, uh, we're going to finish the rest of the logic. So if we have an error, we want to throw an error. You can obviously do more stuff here if you wish. And then if we don't have an error, then we want to do something. So in this case, I'm just thinking of, first of all, let's console log some of the data so I can console log the rows. Let's do console.log. And then this will be rows like so. And if we save this, this should be good enough, I think. All right, this should be good enough uh, for a very simple project. What I can do is start the project and hopefully we should see the results in the console here. So I'm going to clear, let me do control and C. And I'm going to clear everything just so you can see here at the top. So I'm going to do node app.js. And as you can see, service listening on port 3000. And raw data packet ID1 name Brad job web developer. So if I was to change something on the database, let's say let's say we go back to Workbench and let's say I change the name from Rad to Raddy, like so. Obviously, we need to apply this, apply the changes, update it, and that's it. And if I go back, sorry, not here in the in Visual Studio Code, and if we restart the server, node app.js. You should see that the name just updated. So that means that our database is working correctly and all of this is coming from the database. Now, if we wanted to display this on the page, we can use EJS, which we've already set up pretty much. So it, this should be fairly easy. So what are we going to have to do is move this connection query and move it inside here. Let's do that. Let's paste in here. And what I'm going to do now, we want to render the page. Let's grab that when there is no error and then we have the database uh, data. So inside here is where we can put our rest.render and we can pass this object that comes from the database with a comma and then curly bracket and then rows. Technically speaking, we should be able to now use uh, the rows object in or index.ejs. And to do this, we can go back to index.ejs and instead of hello world, let's just put it in here. So to write EJS, we're going to have to open arrow and then percentage, then dash, and then we can put rows. We can select the first object like this. So I'm just going to put zero and then we can select the name from the table like so. And then we need to close it with percentage and the backwards arrow like so. And this should now hopefully say hello ready. If we save this and go back to the browser, let's refresh. Actually, that won't work because we didn't start the server. So let's go back and let's do um, node app.js. That should start the server. Obviously, console logs are here. And now, hopefully, oh, here we go. Now, hopefully, if everything worked, we should get hello ready. Of course, we, if we updated this in the database, it will update and so on. And if you wanted to bring the job title, we can literally copy this EJS and I don't know, let's just do job title and we can do a rows. We are selecting the first object here and we're just doing job. So if we save this job title web developer like so, 
And now the last thing that I wanted to show you is how we can deploy this application. Okay, and the last thing that I wanted to show you is how we can deploy this to Heroku super quickly. So to deploy this to Heroku, all we have to do is go back to Heroku and then under deploy. Okay, basically there are multiple ways of doing it, but today I'm just gonna do it with the, with the Heroku Git. And to do this, it's actually fairly simple. We just need to follow the following steps. So I'm gonna put this on the side and literally just copy them. So if we come back to the command line, let's start by logging into Heroku. So obviously you need your account. Let's do Heroku login. And this should say, press any key to open up the browser. So press any key, I'm gonna press enter. This just opened the browser for me. So what we have to do is click login and this should take a second. You're logged in. Uh, you might ask you to log in if you're not already logged in, of course, and you can close the browser now. All right, we are done with step one. The next step is to actually CD to your project, which I already have, as you can see, I'm already CD to my project. So what I'm gonna have to do is git init, and then we can do, and then we have to do Heroku, git remote minus a, and then the project name, which is node, js dash clear db dash heroku and press enter this should take a second and it's telling me that there is an update as well which i'll have to do later and one more thing that i want to do before we upload everything on heroku to heroku is i'm going to remove this info text file first of all let me delete it and I'm going to create a git, git ignore file that will ignore the node modules. So to do this, we can literally create a new file dot git ignore. And inside here, we can do node underscore modules and then slash. Save this and this will hopefully ignore the node modules and not upload them to Heroku. All right, if we close this, now this is the final process of deploying this application. And let me quickly clear everything and let's do git add everything. Dot means everything. And then what we have to do is commit the changes. So git commit minus I am. And then uh, the example is make it better with double quotes and press enter. So this is going to commit everything. And now all we have to do is push to Heroku. So let's do git push, Heroku, and then master. So press enter, and this should take a couple of seconds to upload the files and build it for us. All right, as you can see, we have built successful. And hopefully now, if we go back to the browser and if we go to, what was it, activity maybe? One sec. So you can see here that I just deployed it. And then if we go to open app, you will see that our website is working from the database. And if I was to update any of those values, if we open the user one more time actually, and if we change this to something else like rad, and let's just change this to web, web designer, something like this, apply. Uh, you should see that everything in the query is looking good, apply. The SQL script was successfully applied, finish. And now if we go back to our live version, as you can see the URL here, and if we refresh, you should see rad and title change to web designer. That's pretty much it. Um, I hope that you found this video useful. Thank you very much for watching. Consider subscribing, like this video, and if you have any questions, please comment below, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.